NFL Daily, Le'Veon Bell has still not signed amid reports tying him to the Raiders and the Ravens and the Jets. Maybe his market just isn't all that good right now. Speaking of quiet markets, we saw the safety free agent market pay out in a big way to guys like Tyron Matthew and Landon Collins, but Earl Thomas has not found the big money deal he wants. The longer it takes, the more likely maybe he does end up with the Dallas Cowboys. And outside of free agency, there's also a nice trade rumor, one that will not go away. Odell Beckham and the Browns will break down that and more coming up on NFL Daily. All right, folks, let's move to some NFL rumors here. Le'Veon Bell, he still has yet to... You're laughing. What are you laughing about? Sorry, it was terrible. I thought we were getting another question. Oh, no, it's rumors time. Oh, here we go. We'll, go. we'll come back to questions later on in the show. Anyway, Le'Veon Bell has yet to sign. Now, Mitchell, you've broken this down quite a bit as it relates to the Oakland Raiders. Ooh. We know the Jets have interest there. What do you think's going on here? Because I have my own thoughts as well. And we'll, we'll spend some time on this because I know it's what a lot, a lot of people are curious the, the about. The rumors have been absolutely insane. It's been that he's been favored to go to the Jets. Oh, wait, no. He's been favored to go to the Raiders. Wait, no. The Ravens. Oh, wait, no. You had a good idea before we came on the show that you think Le'Veon's just kind of boosting up his market. Now, I get it. We said that Le'Veon Bell's one of his greatest assets is his patience. This is getting out of hand. I don't think the market has remotely materialized in the way that Le'Veon Bell wanted it to. I, he, look, we know he wants 14, 15 million. He's a great runner. I guy. don't think anyone's offering that. I think it's more like 11 or 10 million dollars. Now maybe a team steps up, but it's not there right now. Because if it was, he would have signed already. Karma, karma sucks. You know, the, I, I think what could be happening here is the Ravens had some interest. Yep. And I think they've kind of said, you know what? Not at this price tag. Houston has probably had some interest there. I think not at the price tag. Yep. We know the Raiders had some level, but they've spent a lot of money. They have. They kind of might be tapped out at this point. If you guys want to see what my thoughts are and his chances of going to mm -hmm. Oakland, guess what? You can check it out. Yeah. YouTube.com slash Raiders Report. I put out literally an inside look on how the Raiders can get Le'Veon Bell. Again, it's below. YouTube.com slash Raiders Report. But if they don't want to, if these teams, let's say like the, the Colts Ravens. Aren't, the Colts have been out. They were yeah, never in They it. were never in it. If, if the Ravens, let's say the Colts, the Jets, some of these other teams mm -hmm. linked to Le'Veon Bell, you know, if they potentially don't want a Le'Veon Bell, luckily there's still a lot of other running backs that have yet to be signed. I think the Bears are in at the right price, but that's more like under 10 maybe, not at the 15 he wants. That leaves the Jets. And I think the Jets have figured out they might be bidding against themselves. Remember, we had that, like, I don't know, three-ish hours ago, whatever, that all of a sudden, ooh, Raiders, Ravens, and Jets from different people, like, oh, yeah, th they're going to get Bell. Yeah, but also the Jets apparently have set a deadline to him and say, mm -hmm. hey, Le'Veon, you want to come sign with us? This is what you need to do. This is what you're going to get. And also, the fact that Anthony Barr, the fact that Anthony Barr said, you know what, peace out, New York. I'm going to go back to Minnesota. The reports are that now the Jets even have a little bit extra money to be able to throw out Le'Veon and uh, – We'll see, man. Here's what's happened in the end for Lev Bell. He messed up. His best offer was the one that came in last year from Pittsburgh. $45 million over three years, 33 in, in the first two. Good. He's not going to get that on the I don't feel bad for him market. whatsoever. James Conner, good for you, man. 12 touchdowns. Made the Pro Bowl. Maybe, maybe, Tom. James Conner, maybe Le'Veon Bell. Just system run. So back. where does Bell end up? I'm going to say Le'Veon Bell is going to end up with gangrene. Coward. You're supposed to pick the Raiders, Mitch. Well, You're fine. No, I, I think it's going to be New York, too. I, I've been saying I think it's going to be York's New York. New York's been my number one team for a while, but, again, Le'Veon Bell. Where do you guys think he's going to play? The show is not about us. Looking in the comments section, they're flowing in here, which we appreciate. Yeah, thanks, guys. However, if Le'Veon Bell is option A, I think option B could be Mark Ingram. And apparently the Ravens have some interest. There. I think this is a, this might be a negotiating tactic by the Ravens. We see it time and time again. The league comes out, hey, you know, we're, we're going to go with the other guy. And time get into, after time. Yeah, okay, don't sing right now. Anyway, the Ravens we know are in the market for a running back. And Mark Ingram is going to be far cheaper yep. than Le'Veon Bell is. And Ingram is probably not going to go back to New Orleans because they signed Latavius Murray. And if you're the Ravens, you had Alex Collins. Then he had the weird arrest, got cut. That leaves the ultimate replacement back, Gus Edwards. Oh. Kenneth Dixon, Buck Allen, Ty Montgomery's probably not going to be, be back as a free agent. You know, Alex Collins was cut. They got a bunch of other uh, Jags on their roster, i.e. just a guy. What do you think of Ingram in Baltimore? 
I think it's a good fit. So when I first originally released my top five teams for Mark Ingram, I had the Saints at one, but the number two team was the Ravens. And I tweeted out literally six hours ago. As soon as I heard that Latavius Murray was going to New Orleans, I was like, you can almost book it. I guarantee you Mark Ingram is going to be playing for the Baltimore Ravens. He just seems like a Baltimore Ravens type of running back. I think would fit really well with Lamar Jackson because, again, you can give Mark Ingram, I think, a pretty heavy workload, and he's going to be overall pretty successful. And he'll be able to fit in that offense pretty quickly, and he's a veteran. And I think at the end of the day, like, that's what that team needs. I'm going to – I might be off on my numbers here, but would you rather have Bell for, let's say, $11 million or Mark Ingram for six? That's I'll, a pure guess range there, by the way. Don't, don't take that as gospel. To be honest, I'll probably go with Mark Ingram. Mm -hmm. And the only reason is, again, I'm a believer that running back by committee is the way to go in today's mm -hmm. NFL, and I'm going to save money. I mean, look at over the last two years. Ezekiel Elliott, rookie, led the NFL in rushing yards in 2016. Uh, Kareem Hunt, 2017, led the NFL in rushing yards. Mm -hmm. Sure, Saquon Barkley is a little bit of a different breed, but running backs can come into the NFL right away. Mm -hmm. First year, second year and they can be productive. That's why I'm not going to spend big on a running back. Billy Hill Show says Mark for six. Inspiring Munoz says Ingram. Matthew Pohl says Bell. Uh, Matt S. says Ingram. Sarah says Ingram as well. So Ingram kind of winning that unofficial poll there. Let's move then to Earl Thomas, who very much falls into the Le'Veon Bell discussion, where we saw, maybe more so than, than any other position, the safety market exploded this offseason. Yep. Landon Collins got paid. Tyron Matthew got paid. Kenny Vaccaro, Eric Reed, they, these guys all got paid pretty good money. But then, Earl Thomas is not among those guys. And I start to wonder, much like I do for Bell, and this might change at some point. It wouldn't surprise me if it does. Maybe the market isn't there for Earl Thomas. And we know the Cowboys have their price limit. They don't want to spend more than nine or ten or maybe eleven million for Earl Thomas. ET wants that fourteen million dollar range. That hasn't materialized yet at this point. I don't know if it's going too much. I I don't know if it should. Like I think that he's a great player, but when you look at at some of these other contracts, like he wants yeah, in between probably the honey badger and Landon Collins, then when you rack up all the injuries that he's had it's not looking so good. Also, you know, with uh, LaMarcus Joyner, he's at $42 million over that four years. So that's just a quick little mark there. I think we'll get that. Oh, yeah, I tipped that. I did yeah, not we'll get it. We'll figure it out. Today. However, though, like, I mean, honestly, Tom, would you pay Earl Thomas 14 Because I wouldn't. I'm not, but I'm also very stingy in the way that I uh, handle my money that, that I hand out. Yeah, now, your wife showed me earlier. Oh, stop it. Now, remember, some teams that have been linked to Earl Thomas, we can cross off the Texans. They, pr they paid Bradley Roby. They already have Justin Reed coming back. They signed to Sean Gibson. He's not good. I think the Texans are out for them. We know the Chiefs are out. We know the Redskins are out. That leaves the Baltimore Ravens, I still think, a good dark horse, much like the Chargers. Yep. The 49ers and the Cowboys, for me, in terms of money to spend, maybe make the most sense here. Okay. If the Niners say, hey, Earl, here's $13 million. I think he's in the Bay Area. But the last report we heard about Earl Thomas and the Niners was that they haven't communicated. Okay. They might just not be interested. There is a legitimate chance, Mitch, that much like Lev Bell, it's Lev Bell and the Jets is the market, and it's Earl Thomas and the Cowboys is the market right now. And for Earl Thomas, he knows his baseline. Okay, so you're a betting man. Are you going to bet on one of these teams, or are you going to reach into the mystery it's, box? The longer we go the more likely I think it becomes that Earl Thomas ends up in Dallas. I still think it's below 50%. I don't even know if it's 30% right now. But what team is going to step up and give Earl Thomas 12 or $13 million right now? I think the Niners are the most likely. Joseph I'm, says Cowboys. Like, in the end, remember, in the end, a it, tie goes to the Cowboys. If it says the Crimson Tide, which... <laughs> I'll take the no on that one. <laughs> USC, they got in trouble for, for doing that kind of uh, Raiders was from there. Dennis Jones. Uh, yep, there you go, Hibbit. You're on screen now. Earl's going to play for I, I actually thought about the Raiders. Then they paid LaMarcus Joyner big money. Yeah, exactly. Who exactly. would you have given that deal to? LaMarcus Joyner or, or, or Earl Thomas? For that type of money, I'll take Earl Thomas for that type of money. Simon says, by the way, brings up no Colts there. You could include them in the mystery team along with, like, the Denver Broncos or maybe the Atlanta Falcons. But if you're the Colts, you're probably looking for more of a box safety because you got Malik Hooker. Yep. You got to play one of those guys a little bit further well, up. That's not drafted. quite the scheme there. So I don't know if Malik Hooker and Earl Thomas are the ideal pairing there. And 
the Colts didn't want to pay big money for Landon Collins, I'm not sure they're going to pay big money in the end it's for Earl Thomas. And that's exactly it. If they wanted Landon Collins, the Colts could have went out and got him. And the fact that they didn't, I think that means the, f- the free happy. agency market for La- for Earl Thomas and for Le'Veon Bell is fascinating to me. Absolutely fascinating. I want Earl to get paid. Le'Veon, I like Le'Veon. However, I think karma kind of sucks, and he thought that he was hot shit and didn't need to play last year, and James Conner just balled out, and I think that's why his I value see, went I see, down. I see a couple Earl Thomas to the Bears comments. That wouldn't be the biggest surprise to me, but I think they prefer, again, a little bit cheaper option because they have to pay Eddie Jackson big money down the road. Okay. And Eddie Jackson, I think, is a fantastic player. That'd be the best thing to do in the NFL, I think, by far. Fair. But I don't think it makes the most scheme and fit alongside each other. Plus, they are a little tight on money. Speaking of another player who could be linked to the Cowboys, I can't. Des Bryant. He's linked to the Saints. And remember, Des signed with the Saints before his injury, and the report from NFL.com is that the Saints want to bring him back. Mitch, I think that makes a ton of sense. I think it would be good for Des as well, and I think it would be good for the Saints. I mean, the Saints wanted to go out and get, or they went out and got Des Bryant, and unfortunately it's that awful Achilles, and I hope that Des can actually come back. But... Again, I don't know. I, I'm looking at this wide receiver core, Michael Thomas, and then I don't think there was another wide receiver on the Saints last year that had over 30 receptions. Mm-hmm. And I don't think so, but if I'm Drew Brees, I want to play with another veteran wide receiver like mm-hmm. Dez, and I think Drew can get the best out of Dez Bryant. That's fair. Right, let's talk about some defensive players then. Ziggy Ansah allegedly is drawing interest from the Saints and the Bills. The big thing for Ansah, we've seen this at times before in, in NFL free agency, The medical is going to be key here, Mitch. How does it actually check out for him? I wouldn't be very confident in getting Anza. Uh, I mean, look at this. Seven games last year, four sacks, 11 tackles, seven QB hits. Even when he played, he wasn't all that productive. And I Mm -hmm. think Ezekiel took a lot of plays off. Like, And that's one thing that drives me absolutely. Inconsistency has always been rough for him. It drives me insane when I see a player out on the field and you can tell he's not giving 100%. Why would I want to play Anza, who... It's probably going to get $15 million per mm-hmm. year. Why would I want to pay somebody? Sure, when he's yeah. healthy, he's great. But you're talking about injury concerns? You're talking about a guy who's going to give me 50%? No, I, don't, I wouldn't touch Anza with a 10-foot pole. Let's stick with defensive end here. Everson Griffin. Now, remember, the Vikings paid him a lot of money, Mitch. Money, money. Or paid Anthony Barlow, excuse me. Yes. And Everson Griffin now, they're going to come to him and say, hey, can you restructure? If not, they cut him. They saved $10.5 million. Yep. That's a pretty big chunk of change there for a Vikings team that thinks in large part to the Kirk Cousins deal, they don't have a lot of money to spend there. Yeah, again, I mean, what, what Everson Griffin are we going to get? I mean, there's two different Everson Griffins. There's, he's got off the field issues. There's no doubt about that. So if I'm the Vikings, I'm saying like, well, you kind of screwed up. You better take a pay cut or else you're going to get slashed. To me, though, I think Everson Griffin is a player who thinks that he can probably go out and get more. Mm-hmm. I think the, he's going to move on from the Vikings. The Vikings are going to end up cutting him. Obviously, Daniel Hunter has been fantastic for Minnesota. And Steven Wedley, by the way, under the radar player, I actually thought played pretty well for the Minnesota Vikings. Now, depth probably still needed there. Yep. But if you lose Griffin, you save the money, you keep Anthony Barr, you can still draft somebody in a pretty solid defensive end and defensive line class this year. Let's get then to our trade rumor because how can we not? Odell Beckham, it will not go away. I'm kind of tired of it, but it's always going to be there. The report from ESPN was that an AFC North team called again about an Odell Beckham trade. Now, I think right now these trades are, hey, hey, can we trade for Odell Beckham? No? Okay, cool. We'll call, (laughs) you know, tomorrow again. But that AFC North team, I guarantee you it is the Cleveland Browns. It There's no way it's be. not. It has to be the Cleveland Browns. I mean, we know Landry and OBJ are literally like best friends. Best, best friends. Like they're like they've been in each other's weddings. And I think when I see all the moves that this Browns team is doing, they're making money moves mm-hmm. and uh, they're trying to haul in some great players. So I would absolutely love, though, I will say this. You put OBJ on the Browns, man, that would be freaking awesome. But. Unfortunately, we don't think it's going to happen. So right now, as the team stands, Tom, right now, over, over under, 10 and a half wins for the Browns, you're going over? over. Yeah, you're finally kind of getting on my Browns hype train here. Over? Yeah, they're going to win 11. Oh, man, I don't know. Billy Let's Hill says over. Eric says under. Fast ass forward <laughs> says over. I'm going to go under. I'm going to say 10. Oh, such a coward there, man. Such a coward. <laughs> 